as they enter the auditorium. Thank you. अरे शॉप डालाई रही है सर की बार वो Take a minute to thank all the teachers, counselors, internship coordinators, and all the behind the scenes personnel for their tireless commitment to these young people, the work of the Access GED community, and continuing to provide opportunities for all those who need help. So, thank you. I want to thank the Good Shepherd Services for their support of these young people and the entire Access community. And I want to say a special thank you to Ms. Rubin for all of her efforts throughout this year. She's helped strengthen the partnership with the community and made the entire work much more pleasant. Graduates, congratulations. <laughs> Celebrate this milestone. It represents a lot of things. First and foremost, your hard work. As you do celebrate, take a moment to thank your parents, grandparents, teachers, and all those who supported you. Your determination and their assistance resulted in your success. Enjoy. Access GED, it is my good fortune to be here this morning. And have had the privilege of working with your children, our students over the past year. When I arrived in August, I was greeted with a warmth not only from colleagues, but from the students who welcomed me immediately. They believed in our program, and more importantly, themselves. We invested in them now, and we all celebrate the rewards of that investment this morning. Graduates, a couple of words specifically for you. From our community meetings to Alternative Wednesdays and the challenge of problem-based learning to high expectations on predictor exams, graduation requirements, and finally, successfully completing the GED. You accepted the challenges and reached your expectations. You did it throughout the year. And today, we commend and celebrate those efforts. Before moving into the ceremony, I wanted to offer just a couple of words 
to you as you move forward from here today. Remember, each day is new. You choose to make of it what you will. And as you have learned, success and failure, no matter how much support you do have, are up to you alone. Achieve. And you can only achieve if you dare to dream. Imagine the possibilities of things to come. Do. Make those dreams reality. Grow. Learn from your missteps. You will make some. Learn from them. And hope. Believe in and trust yourself, especially when times seem toughest. Your parents, grandparents, teachers, counselors, friends, and family all believed in you. This is your day to celebrate your achievements and appreciate their support. When opportunity knocked, you opened the door and you went through. Some of you after today will go on to college, others technical schools, others work, others in the military. Wherever you go, do your work well. There is honor in all work. Be brilliant, as we in this room know that you are. Thank you for the privilege of working with you, getting to know you this past year. And thank you to all our guests who have taken the time this morning to help these young people celebrate their achievements. Thank you for being here. And at this time, I would like to introduce and ask everyone to please rise. Gentlemen, remove your hats, make sure your cell phones are off. I would like to introduce Mallory Keith, who will lead us in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner.
I know that it often seems as teachers that we stand or sit and speak with you and you are learning. Um, but particularly with the group of you that I see here, I know that I've learned a tremendous amount this year. Everyone up here has as well, and their classmates. Your discipline, those of you here that I see now, your talent and creativity is limitless. It's an incredible group of young men and women in front of me right now. I just want to say thank you for letting me teach you and for you teaching me. I appreciate that. It's made my job wonderful. And I have some evidence that um, that students from Access do great things. And so with that, I'd like to introduce a graduate of our program, Mr. Darren Mills. Please give a hand for Darren Mills. Congratulations on reaching this milestone access. I hope you feel a sense of accomplishment and pride for coming to this point in your academic journey. Even though your path to education was a non-traditional one, you being here, sorry, sorry, you being here shows tenacity and determination on your part. Two years ago, I was in your position. I had just received my GED after a year of study at Access, and I really wanted more for myself. And I did this by continuing at a community college, EMCC. During my time there, I was able to complete two successful years of coursework and became active in the college community. As a result of the heart of my hard work during my first two years of college after access, I was awarded to the dean's list and given many opportunities within the school. This spring, I applied to a number of four-year colleges, and I'm proud to say that I was accepted into SUNY New Paltz, NYU. <coughs> and the University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> if there's one thing I hope you learn from your success at Access is that education is a lifelong process. Even though you've all had our twists and turns in our past, by coming here today, we show the level of character and determination that we should all be proud of. By continuing your efforts, I'm sure you all, like me, will continue to enjoy the challenges of college education and succeed in your life of past. Thank you. today to celebrate the biggest achievement in our lives so far, earning our diploma. It's been a bumpy ride for most of us. In my case, I didn't realize that school was important to me. I would skip school to hang out with my friends all over New York City. At my first high school, there were thousands of students in huge classroom. As a result, I felt I could not focus because there were just too many distractions. When I turned 17, I began to realize that in order to move on to college and succeed in the medical profession as a doctor, or in any other career, I would need to expand my education. I was referred to Access Downtown Brooklyn in last September. At first, it seemed like regular old school, so I was a bit skeptical. However, I tried it out, and it turned out to be a unique experience. 
that I have grown to love. Perhaps most importantly, the teachers and staff have here recognized my potential and never allowed me to give up. It is also very rare to find true friends in a school setting, but I have found a lot of great people here at Access. This is the second thing that has helped me want to come to school and succeed. We've all had our ups and downs, but today is our day to rejoice and celebrate our accomplishments. We are one step closer to the future that our loved ones have always wanted for us. Thank you and congratulations to the graduates of 2011. Thank you, Simon. I, I would just like to say as a father that you guys give me hope. I have kids, and knowing that you guys will be out there in the world as adults makes me a little bit more comfortable with the future. Thank you. Symphony, that was a terrific speech. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate the words of wisdom from one who's left us not to greater things. At this time, we're going to hand out some awards to our graduates, and we're going to begin with the United Federation of Teachers Awards, and to introduce those awards and the teachers who will present them, I would like to give a hand to Mr. Winston Lewis. Federation of Teachers, the Union of Teachers, undergraduating students who have distinguished themselves by outstanding achievements in various subject areas. As the UFT chapter leader here at Access, it is a pleasure for me to introduce your teachers who will announce uh, the graduates who are being recognized today. So without further ado, I'm going to ask the teachers to come up. <laughs> English Awards. Uh. All right, uh, this first set of awards is for excellence in English language arts, and it is with great pleasure that I recognize the first recipient, Miss Symphony Nelson. Don't run away. for excellence in English language arts goes to Mr. Laban Karimita. Let me have the social studies teachers to come up and give the awards. Social studies and I think there's an art award, some art awards also. This morning, I feel very honored to be called upon to present this award, this well-deserved award, to Maya Lina De Paz for social studies. Student who has been 
awarded, besides our award here, a, um, an internship with the Smithsonian Institution at the Cooper Hewitt National Museum as a student scholar. He as well received a medal from the um, School Art League, school teachers, um, retired art teachers who have awarded these awards for the last 100 years. Um, he received the St. Gauguin Medal for Art Excellence. And that student is Levon Karamazov. So in addition to Levon, um, who worked very hard with his art portfolio and he's working very hard with the Smithsonian, I also have a student who was honored, as well as being honored today, she had a bit, was honored by the, um, the uh, School Art League uh, with an award that also has been given out to students in New York City for the last 100 years. And um, she received the Alexander Medal of Distinction in Art, and she also gets the award from UFT, and that is Angelica Kondo. This certificate for our stunning achievement in math goes to Lisbeth Truly embody these qualities that we stand for as a staff. 
I would like to introduce your advocate counselors and internship and career coordinators to present you with these Good Shepherd Service Awards. Mr. Glenn Rayford.
congratulations again. We're very proud of you. Thank you, Bishop Rosa. Now I'd like to bring back Mr. Pearson. So at this time there are uh, two more awards to present. And both of these awards are from uh, the Council of School Supervisors and Administrators, CSA. I am a member, and they, every year they invite principals to choose uh, two students to give leadership awards to. And this was extremely tough. I received these awards about a month ago with, with not much information other than pick two students. So I, I sought the counsel of everyone you see on this stage and had to very, consider it very carefully. So the first student, this is the Student Leadership Award. And this award is for her dedication, her commitment to excellence, not only for herself, but her community. I've seen her help students in every class that she attends in a variety of ways, from the simple, getting people pens and pencils when they need it, to explaining difficult concepts or simply sitting with someone when they need a little help writing something. She's overcome her obstacles in her own life, She's constantly there for, for her peers, the community, and she has an ever-present smile. This award goes, the Student Leadership Award goes to Angelica Condon. <laughs> the second Leadership Award goes to a student whose work ethic his ability to raise questions, his determination and perseverance, and his continual focus on improvement, not only for himself, but for our school, has been instrumental in making some very subtle but simple changes. I'll give you one example. We receive the New York Times every day because this student said to me, I guess in the middle of February, we should have the New York Times here. And then he was really specific. He said, not the other papers, the New York Times because that will challenge us and it will challenge me. Can you do that? And I said, yes. This young man has been a leader not only for his student peers, and I will quote one of them who was also a graduate here today, who said in a meeting once, I don't know why we just don't all be quiet and listen to him. His ideas make so much sense. <laughs> He's been a leader not only to his peers, but also to the entire community and certainly to me. I've learned a lot from this young man. The Leadership Award goes to Mamoun Hassan. <laughs> At this time, we're going to turn things over to Mr. Mumper, who will call out the graduates, who will be asked to come up and receive their Certificates. We do that. Beginning in the year 2010, we 
have Sahai Adeyemi. Samantha Logan. <laughs> Stephanie Messina. Diana Sprint. Shadina Webb and Friend. take a second as we transition to 2011. 2011 school year brought a transformation to the Access GED program in the form of specific graduation requirements. These expectations helped our graduates achieve at even higher levels. The 2011 graduates have viewed these expectations not as obstacles to overcome, but as opportunities to success that will enable these young graduates to pursue their dreams and achieve their goals in the future. So with that, we present the 2011 graduates. for 
about seven months and had more impact on my life than nine other schools I've been to over 15 years. All the staff and access have showed me that helping each one of our students was a priority and not just a job. So I want to thank all of you for that. It's nice to know that if I need a hand in the future, I know where to go. Lisbeth Guadarrama. Jessica Harris. Congratulations, everyone. Um, this is Mahmoud Hassan. I just want to say a line from Mr. Paolo Guelho's book, The Alchemist. When someone deserves something, the whole universe conspires to help him achieve it. So I would like to thank the Access Chasers, Good Shepherd, our principal, and my fellow classmates for being the universe that conspired to help me achieve this success today. Thank you. Edric's car, Jean Baptiste. graduates to reach up and move your tassel across. Can you go ahead and leave me? There you go. Another round of applause for the graduates. And
It's been an honor and privilege to be here every day.
kind of mortician. Uh, social worker, you know, that's easy because you can go out and do that whenever you get ready. The idea of service and versus return. Many people work uh, and waiting for results. I can tell you already that you have everything you need. I don't mean only your education, but I mean inside everything you need. And there's no, you know, people who are hopeless or looking for things on the outside that can never make them happy or change their state of hopelessness. Your job is to operate from inside. And then from that, that space, that piece of God inside you, you can operate from what a Christian preacher might call abundance, operate from abundance. You've heard that before. It's true, I mean, no matter how big it mansion, you can only sit your ass in one seat <laughs> at a time. And when you're comfortable in that seat, you can be a great service social worker. You can be a great mortician because you go to work and your work becomes your prayer. So you have to go out and be a good giver. You can't do a mediocre job as an intern. You have to do the boss's job and you have to do the boss's assistant's job. Everybody, make everybody better. As a servant, you make everybody better. And then, and then the same title, servant, sticks with you. You're a servant, you make everybody better. And the next thing, you have another title, is president and servant. The president is a servant. The job is to put his head down, study you, and make you better. Your job is to put your head down, study your surroundings, or your boss, or your immediate employer, and make him better. You go out and get it. I have so many stories of people who were interns, who became presidents. Uh, I don't bore you, there are many in the book. You all have a book, right? Um, Super Rich. The idea, the name of the book, Super Rich, is a little misleading because some people think that they give you something on the outside that makes you rich. But the truth is, uh, rich is when you're comfortable in that one seat you talked about. Riches when you need nothing. And none of you need nothing. I, I mean, I, I have so many examples. Another story I, was, I just thought about, I haven't told in a while, but I remember it vividly. I went back to my old neighborhood in Hollis Avenue. And I saw uh, this kid, he was a little younger than one of my friends, his younger brother, one of my friends. He's old. You know how they look on the corner when they're young and it's like, you know, when they're 23, 26. 20 to 32, it's like they become more and more like, like bums. So this guy is a full fledged bum now. And he comes up at 2 in the afternoon and he says, Good son, I'm starving. And it's like, Oh, he's scared. He has $50. What? It was just $50. So I said, Here. I'm starving. What did you say? I'm starving. But I gave him $50, I was thinking, what's he going to do? He's going to buy, um, hungry, he's going to buy a Twinkie. He's already 300 pounds. Holmes is big, he's starving. He's going to buy a Twinkie, he's going to get some wine. Uh, I don't know, $50. You know, who knows if he's crackhead, maybe, maybe have sex. Some new, a new girl, too. Man. So he's going to have alcohol, might get some weed, a bag of weed. And, and he got up at 2 in the afternoon, this guy. 2 in the afternoon, he's coming over the corner, he's starving. I was up at 5.30, I got up and made prayer, meditated, got on the Stairmaster, went to work, worked all until then. It seemed like, you know, for him probably the end of the day, beginning of his day, I've been working, I'm just getting on the corner, I'm only there for a minute do some work, which is a peacekeeper program, but I'm there. He's just coming up. He got cable in mama's house. I don't know when I seen cable that. So wait, who's rich? I'm a vegan. I can't eat, I don't eat dairy, egg, fish. I don't eat any animals. I don't, I don't enjoy any of that. I think it's horrible, unconscious behavior. It's it's just, no, no, for real. Just, I mean, I don't want to go into a long speech about it. It's destroying the planet. It's 
sweeping all the sea creatures out the planet, poisoning the ozone layer, the worst comic disaster in human history. I don't know, I can go on. All the grain that could feed the poor, all the water when people are dying for lack of clean water, and giving cats out. So I didn't want it. So I, I don't eat that. He's going to have a Twinkie. You know, you can take a Twinkie, he's a virgin. And he's going to have some wine. I don't get high, I don't drink. I don't. So he's going to get high, he's going to have a Twinkie, he's going to have sex. I couldn't have sex, I have a new girlfriend. Or well, old girlfriends, I mean, you really don't have sex. <laughs> but he's going to do all the stuff rich people do, and I'm going to go to work. And I don't feel like I'm starving. In fact, I'm inspired to serve. Not to give him $50, but just to get him off my back. But in general, to run my five charities, to go to work every day, to try to give people greater opportunity to create businesses that really help people, that make a difference in people's lives. This is the prayer. To really go to work and make a difference. That's the prayer. That's what makes you happy. So I'm asking you all not to look for what they're going to give you, because that's going to come. In my book, the first chapter, Super Rich, I'm defining uh, rich, redefining rich. And I was worried, my brother, y'all know what? He's a prosperity preacher. He said, people ain't gonna go for this one. Because in the first chapter, it was about needing nothing. And people don't wanna hear needing nothing, they wanna hear how to get something. But I, but I, after a lot of um, anguish, trying to figure out how would I phrase this new Super rich, which is the, the, it's really the meaning of Christ consciousness, or the, or the meaning of nirvana for Buddhists, or samadhi for yogis, or taqwa for Muslims. This space where you're in union and you need nothing. So, Jesus taught two sermons. One for the masses, if you're a good servant, if you're a good giver, if you're good, if you're that important piece of people's lives then he is a good giver, you'll be a great getter. And that worked for the masses. And that's the prosperity preacher's rap. Then he told his disciples, if you work hard, and if you're a good servant, if you make everybody better, you'll be happier and closer to God. And his disciples never worry about the taxes, the Romans' taxes, and none of that, because they have plenty of paper, but people love to see them coming. So be a person they love to see coming. Like, you know the difference. And clothes on this day. You see the guy coming down the street, oh here he comes this he, can, can I get, yo, yo, could I borrow, you know, that guy? And you see the other guy who maybe comes and wants to trade, you might want to talk to him. And you see that happy giver, that person who really comes and wants to serve. That's the person you want to stick with. And you know that from your own experience. So if you know that, be that person. Be the good giver, be the great servant, and you will make anything that you could imagine happen in life. So that's what it is. Y'all good? If you don't read nothing in my book, read that meditation chapter. Learn to sit still, let your thoughts settle. We have 10,000 kids meditating around the country, and that chapter is very simple. In all the schools where we give it, it really makes a difference, a dramatic difference. Let your thoughts settle because the collective is doing a lot of unconscious, crazy things. I mean, the people around you, and even in this, even in the government down, they're making choices that you don't have to agree with. As an individual, if you let your thoughts settle, instead of being an extra in the movie, you can be the lead. And you can write your script the way you want it to be. So sit back, meditate, be the, be the watcher. So read that chapter, if you read the whole book, it takes about two minutes. If you graduate, you should be able to read it. It's written. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Written for like, you know, for my IQ, I mean, anybody can read it. So read the book, and, and it's my pleasure to be here. I'm really happy I was able to come to you. Thank you.
So if I could ask all the graduates to please stay when I'm finished speaking, and we're going to get a group photo of you, so if you could please remain in the auditorium. If all the current ACCESS students could exit the auditorium first, we would appreciate that. And then families and friends, if you could also exit the auditorium and join us all for refreshments in the main lobby. Uh, families and friends, I know you might want to take pictures of your graduates in the auditorium, but if you could please wait outside in the main area until your graduate comes in and gets you. Not, not yet, when I, when I... So in closing, graduating access class, we are so proud of each and every one of you. You each set an example of what it means to persevere and dedicate yourself to your dreams. Every day, you have a choice of what to make from that day. Some things you will not have control over, and some things will be out of your hands. Some people will be there to support you and lift you up, and some people will always try to bring you down. But remember this day. This day represents every choice that you have made for you. Every choice that you have made that says yes to yourself. Yes to your dreams, to your passion, to your spirit, and to your future. Remember this feeling as you look at each other, your friends, your educators, families, all of whom love you. Remember your struggles, your successes, and that it was okay to struggle because that is what helped lead you here. Your path is going to be winding, and it will present you with many choices.